Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We have a phenomenal guest joining Oliver and I in the studio now, and that is no other than Erica Dunlap. She's an American beauty pageant title holder from Orlando in Florida, who was named Miss Florida in 2003, and subsequently she was also crowned as Miss America in 2004. She was the first African-American woman to be crowned as Miss Florida. Now, in 2004, she was crowned as Miss America, becoming the seventh African-American woman to hold the title. She's featured on The Oprah Show, the Hollywood Squares, Live with Regis and Kelly, and Fox's News's The O'Reilly Factor. She's also served as a Grand Marshal and etc. She has done so much. Your bio, by the way, is everything. Now, her international appeal began when she started her travels to the Middle East during her reign as Miss America to entertain and also to serve the American troops for Thanksgiving. More recently, Erica traveled to Afghanistan once again to boost the exact same morale. Now, she is also the founder as well of Crown the Crown Jewel. Jewel Foundation, which promotes social development skills and image awareness in young girls. What a perfect conversation to hold just a day after World Humanitarian Day. Erica, thank you so much for joining Oliver and I on set. Thank you, it's ladies. Good to have you. I'm I almost mentioned that it's your very first time in Nigeria. It's my first time here. It won't be my last. I'm so very grateful. It has been an amazing experience. Really? So tell us, what are the fun things you've done since you came? The fun things. Anuru Beach, I was there yesterday. Oh, really? After church, I went to church. I got a chance to experience worship here, which was fantastic. And then I go, um, I went to the mall. Of course, I had to shop a little bit. I have some things I have to take back home. And the food. And the food. I've had a goosey soup. Ooh. Yeah, I've been, I'm, I'm a real native now, right? So <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, did you try the jollof? I've, of course, of course. Oh, yes. I've tried the jollof. What else did you try? Um, I've had your beef. Your beef is very different from ours. It's a different um, Would texture. you say it tastes more organic here? Yes, definitely. Yeah. It's, you know, much thinner and the 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 way that it's prepared is much different. So, you know, all of it has been a great experience and I've documented everything on Snapchat and on Instagram. So all of my friends know exactly what's going on at home. Interesting. Amazing. We're glad that we actually gave you a very warm welcome. <laughs> and we look forward to having you again. Thank you. But let's go back to your journey to Miss America. So you won Miss America 2004, the seventh woman to hold that title. And then you won Miss Florida 2003, yes. the first black American woman to win that. Yes. How was the journey for you? At what point did you decide, decide you wanted to be um, involved in a pageant? You know, I started doing pageants when I was six years old. So when I was very young, and of course, yes, it was my mother's prompting, but it was definitely my inspiration. It was my motivation that um, kept me going to the pageants every single weekend. Um, and much of it was because it gave me so many great skills. Um, I wasn't a very athletic child. Uh, I didn't learn any instruments. I wasn't very musically inclined other than my voice. And so it was important for me to just have some type of outlet. And because I made good grades, my mother would reward me by allowing me to do these pageants on the weekends. And so my goal when I was even young was to be Miss America. And the reason why was because I saw Miss America as a woman who was not only beautiful, but she was talented, she was intelligent, um, college educated, and that was so important for me to be able to represent those ideals. That's amazing. Now, when it comes to beauty pageants, unfortunately, we often see a very skewed inter um, interpretation of a lot of things. People think, oh, it's just people going forward, representing beauty, etc. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I find that insulting towards people like you that have become Miss America of 2004 because it's so much more than that. However, I'm sure there were still challenges and there are still challenges that beauty pageant queens face. What would you say some of those challenges are? So for me, growing up and doing pageants as a young girl, I grew up in the South. In the South, in the United States, is very racist. Mm. And quite frankly, it's not easy for a black person in the South, but especially for black women. And so um, in competing in pageants from, a ch from childhood, it taught me all of the qualities of how to be resilient, how to be persistent, how to be smarter than the next person, how to be better than the best, because I always had to show that even though I wasn't as beautiful as the traditional white candidates, I was more intelligent, more talented. I always put more energy into the, the, the presentation of who I was. And that's, I think, what helped me to get to the next level. So it is quite insulting when people um, minimize us as just beauty queens. Mm -hmm. Listening to your, um, your show earlier, I was just so impressed by both of you. You're both such beautiful women, and you are the perfect representation of what I get to reflect as Miss America because you are, you're me in a different way. You are intelligent women, beautiful women, um, you're intellectual women, 
And I think that that's very important for the world to know that beautiful women don't just have to be exterior beauty, but they also have the substance within them. I, I think it's very important that you mentioned that. Let's talk about body image issues for a bit, because we find that not just in Nigeria, it's something that young girls deal with around the world. Mm -hmm. A while ago, I saw Kim Kardashian post a picture of her body on Instagram, her mm -hmm. perfume bottle. Right. And a 14 year old girl went there and commented saying, I'm only 14 mm -hmm. and I hate my body. Mm -hmm. We find that in the beauty industry, so much focus sometimes is being placed on the external. Mm -hmm. Have you at any point dealt with body image issues? And how best, how would you, what would you say to a young girl who's watching and feeling incomplete, not beautiful enough, not perfect enough? You know, there's challenges at times because I don't want any young woman to look at what I post on Instagram or what Kim Kardashian or any other woman who has made it and who is in the spotlight, what she posts doesn't necessarily reflect who you are to be. So it's important for you to know your own value. And so that's what I teach my girls in my program is you have to know who you are. You have to set your own standards. And regardless of what the world tells you you should look like, God has given you something very special that you have to and you have to uh, develop it on your own. You have to decide exactly what it is that you want to contribute to the world. What are your special talents and gifts beyond your looks? Because looks fade. So what is it beyond that that distinguishes you, that makes you stand out? And usually it's whatever is inside your brain. It's not what's on the outside. It's what you have here. Absolutely. I would say a perfect example of that, a very recent, is Serena Williams. She came out, she had a feature, and the headline of the feature was, I may not be perfect, but I'm perfectly Serena. Yeah. You have to be able to embrace change positively at the end of the day. Very true. But all of this led you to fulfill your passion for the girl child, and you started your own platform called the Crown Jewel Foundation. Tell us a bit about that. So Crown Jewel Foundation is a wonderful opportunity for me to uh, connect with young women, girls that are ages 6 to 16 and even older, but I particularly work with that age group because they do have the most challenges with body image. They're looking at social media, they're feeding off of the internet so much and they don't realize that that's not real. You know, at the end of the day, we can't just base our entire existence on what we see on Instagram and Snapchat. You know, those are fun, they're interesting, they're entertaining, but it's not the end all be all to your success. It's not the end all to um, what you can accomplish in life. And so I want girls to understand that you have to develop your own self-worth. You can't just look at what um, is popular and what's going to get likes because that is fleeting. You know, when, when the Internet is done or when Instagram is not the thing to do in five years, then what? You know, what are you going to have about you? You can't just be an Instagram model forever. So what other skills do you bring to the table? What other assets do you bring to the world other than being fine? I mean, there's got to be more, right? Indeed. And so what I do is I take the time to teach them social development. I teach them about learning uh, social skills, politics, etiquette. And politics is very important. I ran for office last year. And in doing so, it was a great opportunity to show that beauty queens do more than just stand and be beautiful. Um, we are very well informed. We're educated. Um, I'm an educated woman, and I know what's going on in the world, and I want to be able to use my platform to bring solutions to the people who need it. Amazing. You just mentioned that you ran for politics last yeah. year. What did you run for, and how was the experience? So the experience was quite interesting. I ran for a city commissioner in the city of Orlando. Orlando, of course, is where Disney World is, and that's my hometown. That's where I'm from. I'm a native of Orlando. And so what I was most proud to do was to represent all of the people who put so much energy into my success. I wanted to make sure that I'm using my platform to be, um, be beneficial to them. Because what does it mean for me to be Miss America if I don't do something with it for other people? It's not only for my benefit. It's for other people to be able to um, understand new perspectives and to see the world through my eyes. So I wanted to, um, I didn't win, but that's okay. It was my first run. I won 25% of the vote, which I think is fantastic. That I was running against an incumbent who was a very, very difficult person. Um, and so taking an entire year to campaign and to do all of the necessary um, activities that surround campaigning for a political camp, uh, political uh, office was a tremendous effort. And now you're going to do it again? I don't know. I don't know. I, in, my, in my heart, I feel like I could be much better of an asset as a philanthropist um, because I won't have the government controlling my money and telling me exactly how to distribute it. Um, but I do see the need for positive role models in politics, especially in America. 
uh, we have some very dire situations and we have some uh, difficult people who represent us. And so yeah. I think that we need to have positive black role models especially. Intersectional oppression in America is probably some of the worst that the world has actually ever seen. Mm -hmm. But what we saw in this year's midterm elections in the US is that reports showed us that more women ran than ever before. Mm -hmm. How did that make you feel? Do you have more hope for women in politics in America? Well, you know, that's really the reason why I'm here is because I believe in women. I believe in women around the world and I want women to have a voice and to know that their voice matters, to know that their voice is priceless and their perspective is priceless because who else can take care of children, parents that are aging, husbands, and work all at the same time? We are responsible for those things. And so I think it's very important that women and young, and young girls learn how to be accountable for all of the all of the things that we've been gifted with, you know? So it's not just about, um, again, being able to be a political force, but it's really about how do you bring the people with you? How do you encourage people to be better? And how do you encourage communities to be stronger? All right, you went to the White House, your, your reign as Miss America, you went to the Middle East yes. to encourage, and you went to Afghanistan. So tell us about that experience. What did you go to do and how was it for you? It was phenomenal. So as Miss America, you travel the country, you travel America specifically as a spokesperson, as a speaker. And so during that time, I traveled to 40 different states. There are 50 states in the United States. And I traveled to around 40 states um, as a speaker, professionally um, presenting on diversity and inclusion in the corporate space. But having the opportunity to do morale visits, to visit the soldiers who are sacrificing so much of their time, they're sacrificing their bodies, they're sacrificing their freedom to fight for those of us who don't have to, it was just a tremendous honor. I, I went there to entertain them, to just give them some joy. So another fantastic opportunity as a beauty queen is I get to spread joy. Yeah. I get to use my smile and the power of my smile to give people joy. There's so much hurt going on. There's so much crisis happening in the world. And it's easy for us to push to the side that, you know, the most beautiful girl in Nigeria or the beauty queens are not as important. But the reality is, is that we help to bring people out of um, challenging situations. We help to bring them some joy in the midst of their own crisis. That is, that is actually very, that's very accurate. And you're here in Nigeria, you're here to do some work. And I want to ask you what you think about, I don't know if you knew much about the state of girl children in Nigeria before you came, I suspect that you did, but since you've been here, what would you say about the environments in which you're seeing Nigeria's girl children in? So at, at current, I haven't really experienced much of it. Um, I do have some knowledge of it, but I would like to be more mm. aware. Um, and upon my next visit, I plan on having much more understanding of how I can be an asset. Um, I think, if anything, that young girls need to have, they need to have role models from across the world. They need to be able to reach and touch and see people who have accomplished things from um, difficult past lives, difficult situations, and being able to see how they can achieve something, they can strive for a goal, and they can persistently go towards that goal. All right. So now you were in Nigeria for a speaking engagement. Yeah. How did that go? It was amazing. So I was here as a guest of uh, the Entrepreneur Africa magazine. And fortunately, I was able to um, be uh, a speaker for the Boss Lady Conference that they hosted. And the Boss Lady Conference um, was phenomenal. There was over 250 women there. And many of them are aspiring entrepreneurs. I'm an entrepreneur myself. And um, being able to speak to women who are looking to enhance their business, learn how to market their business better, and also how to balance home life and work life, um, that was just, it was an amazing experience. I'm so full from it. Um, there's several women that I've connected with, especially on Instagram. And Instagram is very big here. It's, it's big in the U.S., but it's a real, yeah, it's huge um, here. It's huge here. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't realize that. But just having the opportunity to connect with women who want more out of life, that was, that was just beyond. Brilliant. Beyond. Yeah. And for women out there who want to become beauty queens, who want to hold positions like the positions you've held, what advice would you give to them? And men as well that want to become beauty court <laughs> pageant kings. Yeah. Well, I think the, the most important thing is to um, recognize that there's power in your voice and it's beyond your face, it's beyond your look, it's beyond your physical appearance. You have to have substance. You have to have something that really manifests 
um, a true interpretation of everything that has been poured into you, your family, um, your background, your culture, how do you express that and do you do it in a way that is authentic to the culture and also um, in a way that shows the very best of yourself and, and that's what it takes to be a beauty queen. Again, you have to be able to spread joy and compassion and love to people and it's a hard job it's not easy but somebody's got to do it Someone's and that's a very it. important <laughs> message you've shared with us here erica but before we let you go very finally you seem to be a woman that wears different hats what do we expect from you by the next time you're coming to nigeria what other things do we expect you from know you? i'm very much looking at some business opportunities here in nigeria um i don't know if I, I can do anything without being a citizen but whatever i can do um i'm very entrepreneurial so i'm looking to um, i have some business meetings this afternoon and I'm just open to the opportunities that lay ahead. Well, well, well welcoming you. Come and invest thank in Nigeria. You. Come and start and your And things should be getting easier. The government yeah. is setting up an ease of doing business plan to make the, envi the environment a lot more conducive for SMEs and yeah. big businesses too. But yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank I appreciate you all so much for everything that you do. And we thank appreciate you for being you as well. beautiful representatives. I'm just <laughs> so glad to be able to share this with uh, with my community and with my group and my tribe of people back home. I wish you all the best as you go back to America. I look forward to having you again in Nigeria. Then we can actually take you out to explore more of Nigeria. Next Thank time you. Erica comes to Nigeria, I'm going to show her Lagos nightlife. Because yes, you know what I do on Friday nights? Olive already exposes me every Friday night. <laughs> She's a turn up queen. So if you want to turn up, you want to know what's happening. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to turn up. So um, I'm looking for it next time. Yes, I'll hold you to it. <laughs> Brilliant. We've we'll been speaking with Erica Dollop, who's the seventh Miss America. She won the title in 2004 and the first black American woman to win the Miss Florida crown in 2003, doing so many phenomenal things. She shared with us a bit of her journey, but you can remember to follow her on Instagram. How can people follow you? At Erica Dunlap, which is spelled E-R-I-C-K-A-D-U-N-L-A-P. All right, so follow Erica on Instagram, find out all that she's up to, and we look forward to having her here with us in Nigeria again. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.